All right. So welcome to Goldfinches. Where did they all go? My name's Kristen, and we're going to get right into it and talk about some of those bright yellow, uh, beautiful birds that we get in our backyards. So first of all, I'm sure everybody uh, watching has seen a goldfinch before, but just in case you uh, you want to know what they look like, uh, we have a male here on the right side of the screen, that beautiful, bright, intense yellow color. Um, I hear a lot of the time they're described as canary yellow, um, so it's a very accurate description. And then they do have some black and white markings as well. So the male has like a black cap on the front of his face on the forehead and then he's got black markings as well on the the tail and the wings and there's also some white patches on his rump and some white wing bars now the female which is pictured on the left here she looks uh, very similar but more subdued so she's got more of an olive yellow color still the dark markings um, on the wings uh, but nothing on the forehead and um, her wing bars those white wing bars aren't as intense so they are sexually dimorphic. You can tell them apart just by looking at them, which is fun because you'll know who is who at your feeders. And in terms of their habitat, these are birds that are found in wide open places where their food are found, where their favorite foods are found. So weedy fields, floodplains, cultivated areas like farms, roadsides, orchards, backyards, anywhere that's open where their favorite foods like thistle and asters and goldenrods um, are found is where you're going to see these birds. And a lot of the time, especially right now with a lot of the grass seeds um, being out and some of the other plant seeds being out, I'm seeing them really low on the ground around parking lots and things like that uh, or roadsides. And then you'll drive by in a car and you'll just see all these goldfinches go up into the air and scatter. Um, so at this time of the year, a lot of their food is low on the ground. So you'll often see them um, down low as well. So the inspiration behind uh, this particular topic for the presentation is for uh, where have all the goldfinches gone? This is a question that we at Wild Birds Unlimited get, our team gets um, every year around this time. Um, not everybody, you know, loses their goldfinches, but certainly a lot of people experience this goldfinch lull. So this is sort of why um, we wanted to to do a presentation on this topic um, because it's around this time. Now the answer, I'm gonna get to it, but it really has to do with their natural history um, and their life cycle. So in order to answer this question, I have to give you a bigger picture. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about their natural history as, as well as their diet, both in the wild and at bird feeders to kind of give you that full picture of why you're not seeing them on your goldfinch feeders or why you might have empty feeders and, and haven't seen your goldfinches in a little while. So let's start by talking about their diet. So in terms of native food sources or natural food sources, um, the interesting thing about goldfinches in terms of backyard birds, they're sort of the closest um, bird and actually several of the finches are sort of like this, um, that are herbivores. They're about as close as a herbivore as you can get. So that means that they are eating a diet almost exclusively of seeds. And this is quite unusual for backyard birds. Most of our backyard birds eat a lot of insect material. So cardinals and Baltimore Orioles and chickadees and woodpeckers, those birds eat a lot of insects, but goldfinches are sort of the opposite. And um, house finches and purple finches and siskins and red pools are, are somewhat similar as well. They do eat a very small number of insects, typically more in the summertime when those insects are available in high numbers. Um, but primarily what they're eating are things like tree seeds. So elms, birch, alder, and then some grasses as well as flowering plants like goldenrod. Uh, they love thistle, which is just starting to maybe make an appearance uh, in terms of seeds. Dandelions, ragweeds, uh, goat's beard, which is another sort of dandelion looking plant, um, the native sunflower flower plants, the Coryopsis plants, cone flowers, um, anything in the aster family, um, black eyed Susans, etc. So these are plants that um, when you think of them, they have uh, seed heads and towards the end of summer, those seeds are starting to form and uh, provide food for the goldfinches late summer and into the fall. And the other interesting thing about them is, you know, there are herbivores, the adults, but they also feed their babies regurgitated seeds. So the babies are fed a plant-based diet for the most part as well. Again, it's fairly unusual in our backyard birds because the majority of backyard birds are feeding their babies insects and protein. 
in the form of insects. So seeds is sort of a strange, a little bit of an odd diet for um, our backyard bird babies. Um, so they're sort of unique in that way as well. In terms of foods that you can see them going after at feeders, um, they're really well known for having a fondness for a seed called uh, Niger or thistle seed, you might know it as. So this is a seed that's sort of traditionally thought of as a finch food. Um, so when people are talking about, I have a feeder for the finches, sometimes what they're referring to is a, a Niger feeder. Um, however, um, what you may not know is their, if their favorite food is actually sunflower chips. So those are sunflower seeds without shells. Um, and they actually prefer that over, if they're given the option between Niger and um, sunflower chips, they actually prefer the sunflower chips over the Niger. Um, and just anecdotally in our personal observations and the observations of our, our team members and our customers, we've sort of figured that they like and prefer um, either sunflower chips straight or in uh, our Wild Birds Unlimited Finch blend, which is half Niger and half um, sunflower chips. Um, if they were given the option between that and straight Niger, they would prefer the option with the sunflower chips about nine times um, out of 10 to about one. So um, it's, it's pretty strong preference that they have and they will eat black oil sunflower seeds um, with the shell on as well. But certainly again, if given the option, they're going to prefer the sunflower chips. Now, both the Niger and the sunflower chips are really high in protein and fat. They're high oil seeds, which is why these birds um, really go after them. And it's interesting, I'm not certain why their preference is, is more uh, strong towards the sunflower chips. If I had to guess, it might be because um, they get a little bit more bang for their buck. Niger seed is so tiny, and then it has um, a really small shell on it. And so, you know, they have to shuck it and get this little tiny seed out of that, whereas usually when they're eating um, sunflower chips, they get a, a little bit more food with um, each mouthful. So that would be just a guess. Um, they might they might like the taste. Maybe um, it has, in some cases, a higher oil content because Niger can go a little stale. So there could be some other reasons as well, but just, just a couple guesses there. So a lot of people talk about goldfinches as picky eaters, and I guess they can be thought of that way, but it's not so much that they're picky eaters. It's more that they like their food fresh. So we always suggest that um, you don't purchase more um, either straight Niger or finch blend um, that contains Niger um, than your birds can eat in about two months or eight weeks time. And the reason for that is Niger is the one seed that can really go stale um, fairly quickly within a two month period. And by go stale, I mean that it loses the oil, um, the fat, the protein, the reason the birds wanna eat it, that oil evaporates out of the seed and they basically aren't interested in it. So sometimes we hear uh, folks talking about how their birds aren't interested in Niger right now. And a really quick way that you can check and see if your Niger is still fresh is to take a little bit of it, put it on a white paper towel, crush it with the back of a spoon, and you should notice some teeny tiny drops of oil coming out of that seed. And if you're not seeing any oil, chances are it's probably dried up. So whereas some bird seed you can buy in large quantities and store for a decent amount of time, Niger and uh, Finch blend that contains Niger is really the seed that you wanna make sure that you're feeding as fresh as possible. So um, the other thing about Niger and sunflower chips is uh, they can go clumpy when they get wet. So the goldfinches also are really seeking out food that is kept dry and easily goes through the feeder. So they get clumpy, they can get moldy if it's left long enough and there's enough humidity in the air. Um, sunflower chips don't have a shell to protect them. It's just the sunflower seed without shell. So um, they're more susceptible to spoilage and uh, Niger also, it just they just kind of clump up like kitty litter and the birds can't actually get the seed. So that's another um, thing about Niger and, and finch blend and a reason that the birds may not be interested in the food. So they're not so much picky, they just really want their food fresh and dry. So let's move on to talking about their natural history and their life cycle. So first, I just wanted to throw this out there. I know we're not in the cold weather yet, um, thank goodness, but uh, we get a lot of questions about whether goldfinches migrate or whether they stay a year. And the answer to that question is they do not migrate, um, at least not long distances. Um, they're not gonna go you know, south of Florida for the winter or Central America like some of our birds. Um, they will stay in Ontario all winter long. They move around a lot, but they're here. 
The difference is that they change their appearance. So here I have a photo of a goldfinch in what we call uh, winter non-breeding uh, or basic plumage. And as you can see, um, this is a male and he looks drastically different than he did in the picture at the beginning of the uh, presentation where he had that bright uh, canary yellow plumage with that really dark black uh, forehead markings. He's still got black wings and uh, so that was white wing bars, but definitely a drastic color change. So goldfinches are interesting because they have one complete molt in September after their babies have been raised. And then they'll have a partial molt in the spring to get that nice, beautiful color on their feathers, that bright yellow that comes through. Um, so they do uh, look a little bit different in the winter time. It's a little bit harder to tell male from females. Um, you can look closely and, and, and see, but it's a little bit harder. And they also kind of um, also resemble the young birds as well. So all three look very similar. So they're not gonna look the same at your bird feeders in the winter or the colder months as they do in the warmer months. So during the colder months, just to uh, finish up their life history in the winter, they do, as I mentioned, move around a lot. So they're very nomadic. They spend a lot of time uh, moving and looking for food. And they spend more time at feeders uh, than they do during the warmer months because they like those seeds, right? And once the, the native stock is a little bit depleted, there's always going to be food in, the, in nature for them. And they're always going to go to nature for food, regardless of the time of year. But they will spend a little bit more time at feeders because they do like seeds. And when they find uh, a really good source of those seeds, they tend to kind of hang around. So their numbers tend to be a little bit higher at feeders in the winter time. They're also not territorial, so they're not fighting with each other for establishing territories. So they, they, um, they like to group up their safety in numbers. They establish larger flocks in the winter time. So during the spring, they have a bounty, uh, well, more so in the summer, but once the warmer weather hits, they have more natural food sources. There's a lot of uh, seeds. There's a lot of food at feeders. And then come like uh, late spring, early summer, they begin to get a little bit more territorial. You might've seen the males kind of twittering in the air, fighting with each other um, because breeding is beginning and they have to establish territories, their own individual space. And so uh, when males are, male birds are more territorial, they don't let other males uh, in their territory as much. So that's when we start to see numbers um, and flock sizes reduce. One of the really interesting things and one of my favorite facts about American goldfinches is, is that they are uh, one of the latest nesting backyard birds uh, that we have in Ontario. And I mean, it's late summer right now. We have cardinals that are still raising families. We have um, chick chickadees might be raising a second brood, but doves will certainly still be raising families. There are birds still breeding right now and having uh, nestfuls of young. But goldfinches don't even start the process until July, which is really unusual. Most of our birds are starting in the early spring, um, late May, early June. They're, they're, they know where they're nesting and, and they're, they're on eggs, but our goldfinches don't even start making a nest until July. So they're very, very late in terms of nesting. In around July, the female will actually begin collecting her nesting material and it'll take her about six days, but she'll build this beautiful cup nest, um, usually in a shrub or a small tree in an open setting. So it might be in a field or, or somewhere else that, that's quite open. Um, you see them a lot at roadsides too, uh, or in gardens, um, as long as it's like open enough for them. She'll weave together roots and plant fibers, and then she'll line the nest with a nice soft uh, plant, bound, plant down base. Um, so the babies have somewhere soft to be as they're growing. And then she'll incubate them for about two weeks. And that happens in around August. So um, early August, uh, eggs are laid and, and she's incubating them. So that's sort of where we are um, right now. Um, females are most likely on eggs or kind of finishing up with being on eggs and the, the young will then start hatching. So then for kind of the remainder of August, they are uh, feeding babies in the nest. They're feeding their fledglings. So the young will stay in the nest for about two weeks. And then come September um, in around, they will fledge. They'll leave the nest, but they'll still remain with the parents and the parents will continue to feed them for two to three weeks. 
so just to give you an idea of what it looks like, here's a female I photographed um, earlier this summer coming to, uh, this is called hummingbird helper nesting material. So it is a plant-based nesting material. So she's probably gathering um, that fluff to line her nest with. And they come um, every year, we get them at this nesting material coming in and stealing some for their nest. So they really like it. And so do the chickadees as well. And uh, just before I get to the text here, I just wanted to point something out in this, this photo. Um, the reason I wanted to include it, and it's a terrible photo, but I had to take it through a window, but it, it shows something really interesting. If you look at the female bird on the right side of that feeder, you can see that on her stomach, on her chest, it looks like her feathers are almost wet. Um, they have this really strange appearance or kind of clumpy and wet looking. Um, actually what that is, is it's a sign of her um, incubating eggs. So I've only seen this a handful of times um, because the females are visiting uh, feeders not as much when they're incubating. The male um, probably brings them some food and um, they don't wanna leave the eggs for too long. So she doesn't show up at feeders as often um, during incubation, but it's really interesting. Female birds or male birds that are incubating, some males um, also incubate, will develop what's called a brood patch. And it's kind of this bare wrinkly patch of skin that um, transfers heat really efficiently to the eggs. And so that's the reason that a brood patch um, exists because it's a, a really good way to transfer heat. So there's not as much feathers um, uh, on the stomach or, or the areas where they're uh, brooding at that time. So you'll see this kind of strange feather pattern that they develop. They lose some of the feathers around their, um, around that brood patch so that they can transfer that heat. So to answer the question, where did all the goldfinches go? They are raising their babies. Um, like all birds, goldfinches time the arrival of their young with an abundance of food. That's, that's a good way to plan to have babies because you know that when those babies are ready to be fed, that there's going to be food available. And of course, late summer is the time when their favorite seeds, those asters and thistles and coneflowers are ready and ripe to eat. So that's what they're doing right now. They have a lot of natural food. And if the seed crop um, in a year is a good one, um, then they're going to go to nature for the majority of their food and uh, feeding their babies. Um, sometimes it happens where the seed crop isn't as good. And so if that's the case, we might see them returning back to feeders um, a little bit sooner. But typically when there's a good crop, they will favor the natural food source. They'll eat as much as they can. And when um, the stock starts to deplete, that's when we start seeing them coming back a little bit more at bird feeders. So just a short video there to show you what the baby goldfinches look like and what kind of behavior you might notice at your feeders. So that was a male goldfinch. They usually come to bird feeders um, with their young um, in around September once the babies are fledged. And uh, it's usually two to three babies. And as you can see, the baby was flapping. It was doing a begging dance um, so that dad would feed it. And they also have a very distinct noise that you'll hear. And once you learn the noise of the baby goldfinches, um, you probably won't forget it. It's very memorable and, and you'll hear it a lot uh, once the babies are out of the nest. As soon as you start hearing those begging calls, you know that those little ones are out. So I'm gonna play it one more time so you can uh, listen closely to the call of the young ones. Oops. And you notice how drab the little ones look. So they resemble more like a, a female or um, the non-breeding plumage. Okay, so we're gonna finish off today with a few tips on how to encourage them to continue to come um, throughout the year. So my number one tip is to feed sunflower chips because they love them so much. So this really is their favorite food. So either um, sunflower chips straight or in a blend, um, our Nomas blends have the main ingredient to sunflower chips. And often we hear from folks that um, my goldfinches are ignoring my finch feeder and love the, the, the Nomas blend that I'm putting in my other feeders. Um, and that's because it's, it's their favorite food. So you can offer it in a blend, you can offer it straight, or you can offer it in um, a finch blend that would go in a finch feeder. So that's definitely tip number one. 
Tip number two is to use specialty feeders uh, for your finches. So there's a few reasons why you may want to have um, a finch feeder, which if you look at this photo, it illustrates it pretty well. So you can see um, around the hole, there's um, a little piece of metal, but the hole is really, really tiny on that feeder. It only allows either the Niger seed or the Wild Birds Limited Finch Blend to get through that hole. Why is this a good thing? Well, for one, it keeps that food uh, more dry. So there's less chance of moisture getting in um, and, and making that seed all clumpy. Also, they have a lot of feeding stations. So there's um, feeders with eight to 10 places for the birds to feed. And goldfinches like to be around each other during most of the year. So offering a lot of spaces is gonna make them feel safe as well. This style of feeder, blackbirds cannot really get into. And I'm saying not really because um, red-winged blackbirds can. They have, they have really tiny beaks. They can, they can steal seeds. But our grackles and starlings and cowbirds, they have a really hard time eating out of these feeders. So they are a great feeder to keep going all year long because you don't have to worry about the blackbirds um, coming and taking advantage of the seeds. Sometimes I see my chickadees at it. Sometimes my woodpeckers with their little tongues will get in there. Um, but I, I don't often see blackbirds coming to my finch feeder. So it's a, it's a great feeder to offer for that reason too. Um, offering multiple feeders. So this is going to depend on how many finches you have. So in the winter time at our house, we do project feeder watch. It is not uncommon for us to see 120, 130, sometimes upwards of 170 gold finches. So in order to be able to accommodate that many birds, we have a lot of feeders that they can go to. So I have a finch feeding station and this is a picture of it. Um, so you can see I have two finch feeders side by side and then I have uh, some eliminators, some squirrel preferred feeders um, with lots of feeding holes that they can go to. And I have a couple other feeders um, as well that are offering um, sunflower chips. So we have about probably about five or six places for them to go to find either sunflower chips or the finch blend. Um, and that's to accommodate as many birds as possible. Now, if you don't notice a lot of goldfinches, maybe you get um, a couple here and there, or maybe a dozen or something like that, then you'll probably be okay uh, with one feeder. I just find with large numbers of goldfinches, they eat the food really fast and having multiple feeders is helpful for me. So I don't have to fill them up <laughs> as often, um, but also so that I can accommodate as many birds as I can, because um, they tend to fight a lot. Uh, and you'll see the more dominant ones uh, typically take the best feeding perches. Um, so I want to try and encourage uh, as many as possible to, um, to feed from the feeders and have a space. Now, one of the tricks to um, keeping your food fresh, um, not only is uh, buying it in, in smaller quantities in the terms of Niger and Finch Blend a great, a great idea, um, you don't wanna buy more again than you can use in, in two months time, but also if you don't have a lot of goldfinches or your activity has dramatically dropped because of the time of year, like late summer, what you might want to do is only fill your feeder as high as you think the birds are going to eat for one to two weeks time. Um, because if the food sits in there for longer periods of time, that's when you get more of a risk of it getting clumpy and stale. And so um, offering it half full or, um, you know, two thirds of the way full or something like that, maybe not all the way to the top is a way that you can ensure that that food is a little bit more fresh um, because you can, as it depletes, you can um, fill it more often. And so it's kept a little fresher for your birds. So um, that's going to depend on time of year and how many birds you have coming. But in some cases, this is a good way to help ensure that your food is staying fresh and it's not getting um, wet, clumpy and moldy. Okay, I'm going to try and demonstrate this off. I'm going to turn off the PowerPoint for just one second, because one of the best ways if you have a finch feeder that fills that has a quick clean bottom. So this bottom here that comes off with two buttons. One of the best ways to fill it is actually from the bottom. Now, this isn't going to be possible with every finch feeder out there. I, I've had some non wild birds feeders that required a screwdriver. But the wonderful thing about our feeder is that they does have the quick clean bottom. So I'm going to demonstrate why you want to fill it from the bottom. And I'm just going to take myself, I'm just going to stop sharing for just one second so you can see. Okay, so. 
finches tend to eat down to a certain area, but they'll always leave sort of a bottom, I don't know, the bottom little part here, maybe filling the last two perches with a little bit of seed and they never seem to quite eat all the way down to the bottom. And I'm not sure exactly why this is. If I had to guess, um, my personal philosophy is that um, it's because they like safety in numbers. They like other finches around when they're eating. So when it gets low enough that only um, two perches have access to food, it makes them feel a little less comfortable. So that's sort of why I think they, they, they do that. But anyways, so they leave that little bit at the bottom. So when you're filling your finch feeder from the top, you're always filling fresh seed on top of a little bit of old seed that's possibly stale or moldy. And this is where problems um, sometimes happen. So what you can do is holding onto the lid. Okay, turn your feeder upside down so that the old seed goes to the top. Take the bottom off with those two buttons and then pour your finch blend or niger seed from the bottom up to around the last perch. Replace the bottom and flip it over. Then you have the old seed has gone to the top and you have new seed that's always cycling through fresh on the bottom. So that is the way I would suggest um, you fill up your quick clean bottom finch tube feeders. That's the way I always uh, do it at my house. So provide a protection from weather. So because um, either snow or rain can get into the food and make it clumpy, um, these are feeders anywhere that has like a no mess blend or sunflower chips or niger or finch blend. Those are feeders worth protecting from the elements. So this is a, a huge weather guard that I have over top. It's called the super weather guard. I have it over top of my fit, both my finch feeders because, and we do have a smaller one available. You don't have to get the giant one, but um, you, you do want something to provide a little bit more um, protection from the elements. Of course, we know that snow and rain doesn't fall perfectly down. It, it usually goes to the side. However, I find that they work uh, fairly well to keep um, the food dry. And also the fact that the finch feeders have the small holes so is really helpful as well. Um, I didn't include this in the presentation, but you can see on the bottom there, there's like a little tray underneath the feeder. So one of the downsides of Niger seed is that it does have a tiny shell. And so once the, the finches uh, shuck it, they drop it to the ground and it can create some mess. So to alleviate that, I use um, a little tray underneath my feeder and you can see there's a happy dove in there picking up whatever the uh, finches uh, don't eat. So uh, it's a win-win for the dove, I guess. But yes, more winter protection or rain protection is ideal. Uh, for a finch feeder. And here's just another example. So if you have, uh, this is the squirrel buster, the eliminator feeder, and it does have sunflower chips in it. Um, I keep sunflower chips in there year round or no mess blend in there year round, one of the two. And so I use a weather guard over top of it. Um, there's this one specifically designed for this feeder that helps to keep out, uh, in this case, the rain, as you can see. So Feeder Fresh is another interesting product. I'll just hold it up to the camera there. It's sort of white and granular looking. Um, and basically what it does is, you know, when you buy a pair of shoes and it comes with that little silica packet to, to wick away moisture or electronics, for example, um, they, they all have those little silica packs. Um, this is sort of functions in the same way. This is designed to wick moisture away from your seed. So it's great for like a finch blend, a niger or a no mess. And you can just put a thin layer in the bottom, maybe a thin layer in the middle. If you have a longer feeder, maybe even a, a third layer. And basically it pulls all the moisture away. However, the difference between silica and this is that this is safe for the birds to consume. So it's designed for them to eat it if they wish, or they might drop it on the ground. I find most of the time at my house, it gets eaten. Um, but it's a great little addition to the food. If it's in a really wet area or we're going through a time when there's a lot of rain or snow, this is really handy to put out and it'll always keep um, your food dry and fresh. So it's a wonderful product. Um, and then, yeah, you just mix it in and the, and the birds um, eat it just like they do with the seeds, which is kind of cool. And I also have, I didn't show this earlier, but I do have a little tray so you can see what the finch blend looks like. It's, um, like I said, Niger and really fine cut sunflower chips. Another tip is to clean and fill your feeders regularly. Um, this is true for all birds, but especially for goldfinches, because um, especially in the in the winter months, they're congregating in such large numbers. Unfortunately, the downside to um, large numbers of birds is that sometimes diseases can be spread. And there are a couple that the finches are particularly susceptible to. 
So by cleaning it regularly, um, you're going to accomplish two things. One, you're going to help mitigate disease at your bird feeders, which is really important. And two, um, when you clean it out, you're going to make sure that there's no possible, you know, mold buildup in there happening, um, that there's not um, clumps of uh, seed around the seed ports um, that, that have, uh, because of large amounts of humidity or rain or snow. So it's a twofold. It benefits both the feeder and being more efficient and allowing the seed to flow through and also the birds for being um, healthier. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why, because of house finch eye disease, so, um, or conjunctivitis. So this is a disease we see most often in the finches. Um, I don't believe I've ever seen a chickadee with house finch eye disease, but I certainly have seen American goldfinch, house finch, uh, and pine siskins with this illness. And um, the way that you mitigate disease at bird feeders is by cleaning them regularly with a 10% bleach solution. So you do want to have 10% bleach and water so that you can um, effectively disinfect your feeder make sure there's no bacteria and diseases on there. Um, and you wanna do that as often as you can. Um, recommend at least, uh, if you can disinfect your finch feeder at least once a month, that's great. Um, uh, more often is better, uh, less often isn't as ideal, um, but uh, you, know, you wanna do it as often as you can. And certainly if you see any signs of disease, you wanna immediately address that by taking your feeders down and cleaning them and disinfecting them as well as bird baths. So what you're looking for in terms of uh, conjunctivitis, a really common one, mostly I see this in the winter. I don't think I've ever seen it during the warmer months, not because it can't happen, but in winter, because we have large congregations of birds, um, you have more of a chance of it being passed along, of, of a bird having it. And so you're looking for uh, symptoms such as swollen eyes. Um, as you can see in this bird, uh, it's, it's not able to really open its eyes. Its eyes are getting swollen. You might see what it looks like, almost like a growth there. Um, they mouth gape, as in this picture. So you can see the mouth is open on this bird. And they just act unusual. So if you go outside and there's a bird on your feeder, but it doesn't fly away, that's unusual for a goldfinch. For chickadee, not so much. They really don't care if you're there. But for goldfinches, they are a more nervous bird. Um, they, they're very hesitant to feed when there's humans around. And so if one is not acting um, like it normally would, that's a real red flag for disease. So if you see any of those signs or any other physical sign of illness, immediately take your feeders down, bleach them, thoroughly clean them, as well as any bird baths that you have out. And not just one feeder, but you want to take them all down, unfortunately. And um, you want to keep them down for about two to four weeks, two weeks being a minimum, we would recommend um, a longer than that up to four weeks. Um, because what you're trying to do is get the birds to disperse, right? So the disease is happening when a lot of them are coming together. So you want them to disperse spread out, they will come back eventually. Um, and conjunctivitis, while it is a treatable illness, um, it doesn't often get treated because it's difficult to catch the birds. Um, you, you take it to wildlife rehabber, not all wildlife rehabbers, um, unfortunately, can help birds. So it's not often treated, even though it can be. Um, and unfortunately, the birds often succumb to the illness um, in, in a few weeks. So by having the feeders down and, and the birds dispersing, um, that hopefully mitigates the disease spreading among the birds who are healthy and still coming to your feeders. So not a nice thing to talk about, but a necessary thing uh, for feeding the birds and especially for um, finches in winter. So a couple other ways you can attract your finches is by offering water year round. So my finches are a huge customer at my bird baths. They uh, love them. I often see them drinking, not so much bathing, but certainly drinking at my bird baths regularly. They'll often go to the feeder, grab some food, and then go right down to the bird bath. And they do that during the winter months as well. So we have heated bird baths going and finches really appreciate having um, that open water in winter. So they will often seek that out um, in backyards and look for a spot that has not only food, but also shelter and uh, open water. So that's another way you can attract them. So that's, uh, that's the presentation. So thank you for, for tuning in. Um, if you have any questions, I'm going to take some time to answer them now. Um, and, but if you think of anything after the fact, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, both stores, Wild Birds Home and Berry or Newmarket, we're both available on social, on Instagram and, and Facebook. We've got a great Facebook group as well. You can call us, you can email us, you can come in store, uh, whatever is the most convenient way for you. We're happy to, to help give you advice and answer any questions about your finches or other birds. Um, and you can also reach out to me directly um, on Instagram as well if, if you want to do that as well. 
So I'm going to stop the share and I'm going to put it out there and see if anybody has any questions. Okay. So if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat. Um, I know that there was a question that came in earlier, so I'm going to just read that out. So do we have any recommendations for feeders that deter squirrels and keep seed falling from the ground? So I think I've answered that about um, the seed falling to the ground with respect to the trays. Um, you can't use trays on all, all feeders, but on finch feeders, um, you can certainly use them and they're very effective. Um, it's called the seed saucer. So uh, if you wanna have a look at it in store, um, have, feel free to just reference seed saucer. In terms of squirrels, so squirrels are interesting because they typically, for most people, if you're feeding straight Niger, they often don't bother with Niger seed. Um, it's not a food that they're particularly attracted to. However, every now and then we get, of course, uh, somebody who has a really determined squirrel and is chewing on their finch feeder. And in that case, I would suggest um, purchasing the Squirrel Buster Finch. So we have a, a squirrel proof uh, bird feeder that's specifically for finches, or you can get a cage to go around your finch feeder. It won't keep out the chipmunks and the red squirrels, but it will stop the larger squirrels. Um, pole systems and baffles are another way to do it. If you have the space to accommodate a pole system with a properly paste, placed baffle, that will keep um, the squirrels out as well. So I have um, on my pole systems uh, baffles, and so that's what keeps them out of all my feeders. I'm um, just going to see there's a second part to this question. Is it worth um, dedicating a feeder to with finch blend to gold finches because they seem to be happy with the eliminator and they seem to be happy with the no mess blend. And I would say to that, it's really a personal decision. Um, like I mentioned, one of the benefits is that the blackbirds can't get into the finch feeder. So that's a really nice perk of having, of having a, a dedicated feeder. You can also accommodate more birds, but if you have a smaller number of goldfinches and everybody's able to share in your eliminator, then you're, then you're good. Your birds are going to be happy. So and I'm just seeing a comment here that the fa favorite uh, food of goldfinches in Midhurst are cut plants. And that is very true. I think they're a member of the sunflowers, the Coreopsis plants, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong on that, but I have cut plants in my garden too. And they do certainly really appreciate the seeds. Does anybody have any other questions out there about your goldfinches? Give it a minute. Okay, well, then I'm going to leave it there. And if you think of any questions after the fact, feel free to get in touch and, and let us know. And thank you very much for joining me today to talk about um, those beautiful goldfinches. And I hope you enjoy them throughout the rest of the summer and throughout the fall and winter as well. So take care, everybody. And we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.